Uh, good afternoon to you all. I welcome you all to today's book talk uh, um, to be delivered by Professor Ravi Chandran on his uh, latest book, uh, Managing Social Organizations Lessons from World's Largest Pilgrimage Center, which he has uh, co authored with uh, um, prof his co author is Professor S. Bhankar Ramaneya from I am Lucknow. Uh, to introduce about the book, the book scans through the entire working of TTD with uh, precision. It explores every nook and corner, uh, revealing the macro and micro management of such a complex and large organization. The penmanship concise is concise, well placed in a, and in depth. The book has a demystifying effect yet fills you with awe and reverence at the same time. This is an invigorating case study filled with insights into the evolution of the management of TTD. This scientific approaches, innovations and technology to cater to the trends of the time, people and environment in pursuit of offering the best experience and indeed noteworthy. The book will provide an opportunity for students, scholars and participants to understand the challenges of managing large social organizations. We all know, of course, uh, Professor uh, Ravi Chandran retired recently from IMA, earned his math PhD in mathematics from IIT Madras in 1980, specializing in applied probability. He joined the core faculty of IIM Ahmedabad in June 1980. His teaching interests are in the areas of decision sciences, operations management, strategy, and leadership. His consulting and research portfolio are majorly in operations management, supply chain, and good governance. Currently, he serves as a the distinguished professor of management um, uh, part-time at IIT Mandi, Himachal Pradesh, with a mandate to set up a greenfield management school. He is also advisor to private state universities in Ahmedabad. Uh, to introduce Professor S. Venkatramaniya, he is currently a professor in operations management at the Institute of um, uh, Indian Institute of Management, Lucknow. He has been working at IIM Lucknow since May 2013. He has around 27 years of teaching and research experience. He was a postdoctoral research fellow at Singapore MIT Alliance program, uh, Nang Business School, Singapore, um, uh, uh, and worked at Honeywell Singapore as a SCM lead engineer. He was a Fulbright Scholar at W.P. Carey School of Business, Arizona State University, USA, during fall of 2009. He worked at IIT Madras and I am Indore and I am Kojikod before joining I am Lucknow. He was the coordinator of the Center for Excellence in Manufacturing at I am Indore during January 2007 and July 2012. Over to you, Professor Ravich. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I, I must like thank the librarian for, for making this happen. In all these things, you know, the institutions of this kind, of our, our institute kind, they have a legacy. Uh, if I remember right, this book talk uh, phenomena was started by the, the former late uh, librarian Anil Kumar. And I think the tradition is continuing. That's what happens in any good institution. On this occasion, I would like to warmly recollect my memories and interactions with Anil and uh, as a librarian and as a friend, and as a person who was institutionalized to this, uh, this arrangement. Uh, of course, thanks to the current librarian also in making this to happen. Uh, he did it very quickly and promptly because what I did was the day in which I got the book, I donated one copy of the book to the library. Uh, and that is what is here. You can see that cataloged and all. And I requested him immediately, can you consider uh, arranging a book talk? And he acted on it very promptly. And uh, well, this book is co-authored between me and uh, a faculty from I am Lucknow, a long-term friend. Uh, Venkat, you want to say hello? You can say hello. And uh, uh, Venkat Ramaniya also means Balaji. So in some sense, the author and the subject of the book is the same. And uh, so he is a faculty from I am Lucknow, as I mentioned. Another person, there are several people who helped in this process. Another person who helped to shape up the book in some sense, given my technological handicap, is Ajay. Ajay is sitting here. And uh, Ajay has done a lot of... Uh, Ajay is a very... Uh, happy going lucky girl uh, and <laughs> making her to work is not easy and this work was not easy as well so therefore uh, she would have to sort of struggle through because my expectations were very different I want it now 
and you know i mean she was uh, she was willing to help all that and she has put it put all these things together so i would like to acknowledge and thank her uh, for for her efforts in making this happen this is a long pro long dream project and uh, i would sort of i have a set of powerpoint slides i'll just run them through as quickly as possible and uh, then we can have open ended discussion what is so great about nothing great about this book but there's something unique about the book uh, and uh, that's that's the way this talk is structured we have about an hour i will try and wrap up my my presentation in about 30 35 minutes so that uh, when you want to say something you can add and there are questions from the floor we will take the questions from the floor of course it's a very small book 250 pages about 30 40 pages are data Uh, because i am process don't write anything without data and a couple of pages go on preface and there are some pictures so if you remove all that you have about 180 to 200 pages of which about 40 50% 50 is description 40 50% is analysis so therefore this book can be very easily read if you want to read it's a little expensively priced because uh, there is no mass market for this book so it's about 400 500 rupees but i am not here to do a sales show uh, but therefore i will not talk about it you can buy it in amazon you can also buy a colored version of this book which is 20% more premium uh, i mean this is how the commercial world works and we are looking at an international edition hopefully that will also happen that's the the broad background can i get those slides please uh, where is my friend yeah okay is there but you are sitting somewhere else so i am a little confused okay uh, <clears throat> yeah uh, they can go to the next slide please if you don't mind are you going to stay with me or you i have managed this okay that's fine okay self help as they call okay uh, this this requires no interview venkat can you see yes sir okay yes, sir. you can see right okay. yes sir you can see your handsome picture here thank you so much sir all right uh, next to balaji okay this is the cover of the book and uh, this is designed by me i take a lot of privilege in doing this because in one page it uh, it covers the entire gamut of activities that happens lord balaji is the center of the whole exercise and laddus are the most exciting uh, prasad you get when you when you go to balaji and there is a camphor uh, flavor you can see next here and this is the puja material balaji is considered to be the part of the divine bell if you go to any vaishnava temple you see a bell and therefore the bell is kept here this is balaji higher version macro version and micro version and there are two people dambatis are praying uh, chetan will understand the word for dambati the meaning for dambati they are praying and this is the famous uh, religious leader called the ramanujacharya who promoted inclusive growth in the in the country in the world of religionism so you find here uh, captain of yeah, good 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 to see you okay and then you see that lot of this is the staying places uh, this is how people can arrive here for railway station etc this is the professor grams forte and you go and give your hair to balaji because you can't give anything else and there are there are women uh, barbers who do this in in tirupati now and of course this is the temple uh, premises and there is a pushkarni here which is the tank where about 40000 people take bath every day and it is kept very clean so i think that that sort of captures in quick sense uh, what's all happening there and it was designed uh, uh, intuitively with no great artistic sense uh but i made sure that this fellow has this flag and all uh, and um, <clears throat> yeah captain who had appeared uh, who attended one of our fdps is very good in uh, drawing and he offered to help us to do this and he did that and we have acknowledged him in the book uh, of course we paid him a small honorarium but that's a different matter okay Wha uh, the the book is essentially in seven chapters because balaji is you know, Oh, what should i do i should go there yeah. okay all right for the first time somebody has told me where i should stand and talk uh, in the in the last 40 years of my uh, 40 45 years of my teaching experience oh, oh i didn't know that okay so there is some some uh, some recording and some publicity also okay not a problem i didn't know this like you know but see as teachers you knows like you know um, but sab came once to the classroom and he wanted to fix the microphones and i would not allow him to do that like you know he said you can't do this you can't do this etc he gave up and went away i think uh, either either you or anil dewas your professors are not amenable for this uh, fixation business but nevertheless uh, okay uh, this is the content of the book essentially it's a, it's, a, it's purposely and uh, tactically divided into seven parts because uh, balaji temple is known as saptagiri seven mountains therefore we thought it will have seven chapters just a symbolic gesture this is not a religious book by any stretch of imagination 
It doesn't talk about any religious connotation. It doesn't promote any religion. It doesn't criticize any other religion. It doesn't even talk about the existence of God. Forget about existence of otherwise of God. It simply talks about Balaji, Balaji, Balaji temple to the extent that is necessary. So essentially, the context is well articulated. The infrastructure that exists. Uh, what is the value chain for the pilgrimage? Because we as, a, as management professionals, we need to look at this. And how does the darshan is being managed? Um, managing darshan is not a joke because we are talking about 80,000 people visiting the temple every day. And on some three or four days in a, in a year, it can go as high as two and a half lakhs. This is a very large number. 80,000 people every day perpetually is big crowd management. I think that's the reason why we, we started looking at it. The support services for it, just imagine the kind of sanitation facilities you must have, drinking waters you must have, food, shelter, this, that, etc. Phenomenal. And the societal interfaces of the temple and the administration in the temple. That's how the book is organized. The, the, the managerial aspects will start from here, three, four, five, six, seven. The first two are just setting the context and the infrastructure. Uh, <clears throat> Why we wrote this book? Because this is world's largest, rich, richest temple in the world. It has got uh, uh, it has got the number two position in terms of the gold reserves. I think Lord Balaji wants something like 800 tons of gold, pure, 24 carat. Okay, so he is very rich. He is damn rich. Okay, uh, 100. Uh, but of course, he lives without his wife. Probably that's why he's rich because there's nobody to spend because his wife lives downstairs. So he lives upstairs, and the difference is about 20 kilometers. So therefore, there is no opportunity for him to spend money. So it stays with him. Uh, now, a thousand plus years of legacy. There are recorded statements uh, which says this temple has been in existence for more than thousand years. That's a that's a big legacy. 80,000 pilgrimages every day. And it is the largest floating city with the associated administrative challenges. There are multiple stakeholders from the press, politicians, CM, PM, whomsoever you name. They are all interested in the temple in some sense or other. People like you and me are also. Temple management is not, I mean, that's one part. If you look at temple management, temple management is not a part of professional management so far. It is one of those under-managed sectors. People don't talk about it. Somehow when you talk about temple management, it gets into the religious connotation. And therefore, it's a very narrowly addressed area. We thought we'll just look at it. Uh, we also thought insights and reflections based on the TDD administration may be useful to other temples, social organizations, and NGOs in the country, which deal with a large volume. So we thought we can abstract that. And of course, it is very exciting to document a large-scale administrative activities. And... Um, <clears throat> The previous president at some point in time visited the temple and said, I wish that the temple in this country are being managed like this. And he also said, uh, it's on record, he, so he also said, somebody documents this and makes it available to the whole public at, at large so that people can follow this in different places. So this is one of the triggers, but I think the trigger has been, uh, some of us have been going to this temple, both myself and Venkatramaniya should be going to this temple for more than when I was some three, two, one, etc. from now. So maybe we would have visited this temple from 40, 50 times. So therefore, there is a, there's a kind of an association to the, uh, to the temple. And therefore, we thought we'll just do this. Uh, <coughs> this is where Tirupati is located. Those who do not know where Tirupati is, it's not too far from Tamil Nadu. It's in the Chitur district. And uh, Chitur is the Chitur collector's revenue depends on Tirupati revenue. And as a matter of fact, whenever the collector in Chitur takes charge, the first place he visits is the Balaji temple. Uh, because he says, because first he is the biggest customer and we, he is the largest revenue provider. There, of course, the divine dispensation and many other things. No matter whether he believes in God or not, he has to go there because money, 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 money. Money is honey, as you know. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> of course, this is Balaji in Golden Farm and there is no religious here, religious connotation here. And you can see that uh, this, this, this entire uh, tower is, uh, is, is gold washed. We whitewash, he gold washes. Okay, and uh, the, this, is a, this is an amazing uh, exi place to be there. And if you are there, you would, uh, the frequency vibrations, uh, astronomically, uh, Chandra, the moon, has got the highest uh, exaltation in this area, which means if you are there on a full moon day, uh, the divine, uh, the, the, the mental calmness and peaceness you'll have is phenomenally high. This is proven scientifically over a period of time, but I'm not going to recommend all that. Uh, <clears throat> This is the temple layout, very difficult to see and uh, get a sense of what's happening. But Balaji is sitting somewhere here. He's sitting here and all the way through, this is the main part of the temple. And when you have a darshan, you go this way, this way and see him and then come out of this place. And then a lot of small, small things around this place. And this is the main entrance to the temple. And then there is an Anshanaya temple very close nearby. The Pushkarani is on this side. And there is a Varaga Swami, which is a, uh, the, uh, Varaga Swami is the landowner. Balaji is a tenant. 
and therefore a portion of his revenue goes to him. And he gave this land to him and he came around as an orphan. So therefore, that's a legend. Let's not get into all that. So that's fine. And if you walk across this place, you get some tasty laddus. Laddus, like in each laddu is about probably 1,200 calories, uh, but people eat three, four of them. So therefore, it's it's fine. So that, that I think is the broadly the temple layout. Uh, <clears throat> this is what happens when you go to Balaji temple. Uh, you arrive by some mode. Some people walk. Uh, some people travel by road, bus, etc. Some people come by train, some people come by plane. Uh, many people get, get reach the base camp. From there, they walk up to Tirupati. I do that very often uh, just to just to sort of know, uh, feel good about it. Uh, and uh, I believe that at least that's the least one should do. So base camp, from there you walk up or uh, you go to the local, I mean, you go to the, from the base camp, you go to the local temples in Tirupati, that's your choice. Or you go to Tirumala. Once you are in Tirumala, you look for an accommodation. And then you, uh, when once your accommodation is finalized, you try and uh, go for, uh, uh, I mean, you go for darshan, but that will take some time. So once the accommodation is done or before that, you go to the Kalyanakata. Kalyanakata is a place where you donate your hair. And then you go to the Pushkarni, you take a bath. And then once that is done, you join the queue complex. And some pilgrims directly come to the queue complex. They don't go through this process. And the, I mean, uh, God willing, you get darshan, like, you know, uh, and after the darshan is over, you get into this Anaprasadam place where people are fed. Something like 40,000 meals are served every day, every day. Uh, I mean, like, you know, this is a phenomenal amount of volume. And of course, once this is done, you collect the prasad and this and that, etc. And if you have time permits, you see the local temple sightseeing. There is a museum, there is a library, there is a, uh, there is a, some musical festivals, there's something other that happens. So you can sort of get to see all that. This is how this whole system is organized. This is what a pilgrimage does in the temple. This is a walking path, and I think just wanted to give a pictorial sense uh, because Tirumala is up here, and this distance is about seven kilometers. So you walk, it's about uh, 4,000 steps, and you can do it in about three, four hours if you're healthy. Otherwise, you can do it a little longer. There is a steeper path, which has got only 2,500, but that you can do in two and a half hours, but that requires a little bit more effort. But I think this is the most preferred path, and you can sort of generally happily walk around. And uh, that's what people like me do because elderly people do that. And this is the kind of a pictorial representation of how the luggages are tacked because people, when they walk, they have the luggages. One executive officer saw this and said, this system should be changed. There is a very highly sophisticated electronic system which operates. I will not take you through these rules because it's not important. People in logistics will appreciate the relevance of this because you need to get the luggage, tag them, store them, and you collect them in the foothills and bring it up the top and then store it in the appropriate place. When the fellow comes in, retrieve it and give it to him. This is a very Hercules task and it's done free of cost. And the, you name the best of the technology that is being talked about and that's described in the book in detail. I'm not going to get into that here. Uh, this, I think, is the place where the darshan happens. Uh, uh, the way in which it sort of works is like, you know, you enter here, there is a slope here and you walk on the slope and then you just go and come back and get out. Balaji is here. Depending on the amount of money that you pay and the and the darshan ticket you have, you can you can be turned around here or you can be turned around here. Very rarely you go to go here. Okay, very, very rarely. And the amount of time that you spend in seeing the Balaji right somewhere in this horizontal line is roughly about 10 seconds. Uh, roughly, roughly about 10 seconds. That's 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 the largest you can get. If you start from here, it will be probably about half a minute. But if you're tall, you'll get an opportunity, but the slope is well done, so therefore you can you can possibly manage it uh, quite well. So I think uh, that gives an idea of the kind of, uh, in some sense, Balaji is the bottleneck. You can't expand these resources. And there is a large number of people who are waiting. And uh, variability on the arrival time is represented by the waiting time. So those are the mathematical things that one can talk about. But this is essentially what happens. The Ladu in the Tirupati is uh, appearing in the postal stamp, which is an important thing. And it is also geographically tagged. Nobody can use the word Tirupati Ladu. Uh, only Balaji can use the word. So I think uh, they have sort of, you know, people started making uh, these agarwals in Rajasthan started making Tirupati Laddu. They said, no, this will not be done. You have, you have to, Tirupati Laddu has to be made only in Tirupati. Nobody else can use the name. So all that has been taken care of. Uh, I thought I'll just mention this because uh, it's not easy in this country to be simple. You have to protect your, your intellectual property in whatever way it is. Now, this is a large list of uh, operational statistics. The annual budget of Balaji is about 3,000 crores. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of money. And Hyundai, Hyundai collection alone is about 1,250 crores. That means Balaji earns roughly about 4 crores a day. He doesn't move. Imagine what will happen if he moves. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, amount of uh, gold received per year is 800 to 100 kgs, 1,000 kgs. 
silver similar numbers number of trust etc number of donors contributing to the trust is about 3 and a half lakh 3.3 3 quarter lakhs number of bags handled for a day is 31000 number of rooms at tripla is 7650 rooms just imagine like you know can you manage such a large hotel 6 7650 rooms in various cottages across okay uh, now the number of departments is 43 regular staff is 7000 outsourced and contractor stock is 14 I mean, like, you know, one is to three, as you can see that uh, two, two thirds are here. And uh, number of workforces engaged in housekeeping alone is 2,800 people. The space is spick and span. And there are volunteers who come and work in the temple every day. There are about 2,000 of them. I just give you this idea so that you get a sense of uh, what is the kind of magnitude of the issues that we are, we are talking about. Number of tonsures, barbers, is 1,360. They operate 24 by 7. The largest barber shop in the world is in Balaji Temple. Largest barber shop. And Balaji makes about 200 crores of money by selling your hair. Okay. He's, he's, a, he's a very smart business fellow. Uh, number of meals served per day is 70,000. Number of pilgrimage tra I mean, treated in Aswini Hospital per day, which is a charity hospital, 3,200. Number of pilgrimages who take bath in Srivari Pushkarni, 37, 20,000 people. Amount of milk consumed per day is 12,000 liters. The number of devotees that visit the Kalyanagata per day is 30,000. Number of meals served in a day is 70,000. So anything you talk about, big numbers, big numbers. So therefore, uh, it is it's amazingly exciting to see how this temple is being managed. That is the reason, that is the motivation for uh, amount of wastewater treated per day is 10 million, 10 million, uh, 10 million liters. I mean, you can, you can, number of calls received on a 24 by 7 call center per day is 2,500 calls. That's not very big because people are not very demanding. Okay. Uh, now, I think uh, I will not get into any of these things. Number of students studying in various schools and colleges of the university is 24,000. Uh, number of pilgrimages that are transported by APSRT bus per day is 35,000. So, this just gives you some magnitude. By, you take any count, it's a large number. It's a lot, that, that is the bottom line. And um, what are the management lessons that we want we learned from this book? I'll summarize it quickly. And then I'll take you through one or two small little examples and then stop. I think that would be the right thing to do. Um, GD is an ever-changing organization. Uh, it's very, very, um, uh, very surprising for me that this organization is ever-changing. Uh, we can see, I mean, it's not surprising that if you're in the commercial space and if you're a multinational company, and if you change, it is not surprising. But if you're in a social organization, and that too in a temple, for example, like, you know, many of us think we went to this uh, Vaishnava Devi and came back. What we tell people, hey, itna beedta, line me mein to char ganda beda tha, or das ganda beda tha. Like, you know, when you come back and tell this, you feel very proud that the more the hardship that you go through, the more privileged you say, like, you know, I went to Puri Jagannath temple, itna beedta, andar bhi nahi jaya sakta, ek lakh people tha, dead lakh people tha, like, you know, e bolne mein, you know, we feel very proud because we feel that divine darshan is, is enjoyable depending on the hardship that you go through. Therefore, these organizations are very unlikely to be consumer friendly and Tripadi is an exception. And therefore, they constantly evolve. They constantly evolve. I remember uh, the, I mean, I, I know I've seen it in my, in my own eyes when I was a young fellow, when I went to the Thirumala, Tripadi, and when I went to the Pushkarni, the Pushkarni was different from what it is today. There is a pre-bathing area, there is a watchman, there are security guards, there are safety, safety squads, all kinds of things, like, you know, to make sure the place is hygiene, well kept, this, that, etc. Well lit area, separate area for men, women, this, that, etc. In those days, nothing of that kind exists. So it is a very, very changing organization. Laddu production, we'll talk more about that. They automated the Laddu production. They figured out it is not working out. The Laddu that is made through this automated machine, they imported machines from Bosch, German. It was not working out. So they changed it. They came back to the manual operation. 700 people make only Laddus every day, 24 by 7. 2.5 lakhs of Laddus are made every day. It's the largest employment opportunity in some sense. But it's a very changing organization. It is informally fostering creativity and change management to manage large volume of something or other will be happening every time you go there. Small, small things like, you know, people will identify this is a bottleneck, this is the pain area, can we change it, can we do it better? A lot of that is being talked about in the book. Best practices related to balancing the multiple stakeholders. Imagine Sudha, Sudha Murthy, who is the, one of the founder, founder wife of uh, Narayan Murthy, is on the board. Her way of looking at life is very different from a government officer. And there are a large number of politicians on the board. 
and there is an IAS officer who is running, there are two IAS officers who are running the show. Their way of looking at life is very different. And the pilgrimages are of various strata. Somebody walks to the temple, somebody is a rich fellow, Anil Ambani goes there and he stays in the cottage. Like, you know, similarly, some large, uh, big people, when they go there, they have a very different expectation. Similarly, for example, when a VIP visits the temple, he has got a very different expectation. So, depending, I mean, employees have expectations, contractors have expectations. Like, you know, managing this multiple stakeholders perspective is not a joke. And this organization has learned how to balance this very, very carefully. Uh, now, <clears throat> constraints and opportunities and trade-offs positioned before the executive officer, who is an IAS officer in a large organization is worthwhile to admire. The book talks about that. Best practices in funds management with so much of money. Like, you know, if you're getting 3,000 crores a year, uh, that money has to be managed. It's not a joke. And you need to have mechanisms to do that. And they don't have funds managers looking after these things. They don't have some of these uh, high-flying mutual fund organizations working for them. Uh, piloting and managing organizational transformation from religious organization to a social organization. Otherwise, they won't be feeding so many people. They won't be supporting so many universities. They won't be creating a, a trust-based organization by which the Hindu Dharma is being uh, propagated. So these are the goshalas, for example. Like, you know, these are interesting goshalas, uh, afforestation, uh, banning uh, plastics in the in Tripada, uh, ensuring water conservation, sewerage treatment properly done. The, these kind of the air pollution, noise pollution, all these kind of things are very interesting way of piloting this organization from managing uh, from religious institution to social organization. Uh, now, experience in managing multiple verticals. As I mentioned to you, the housekeeping itself is a factory. The the the, 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 the the because the number of toilets, the number of water points they deal with is phenomenal, and you have to keep that place very clean. There is no choice. Just imagine on, a, on the last Ratha Saptami day, two lakh people visited the temple. Two lakh people the last two days before there was Ratha Saptami, as many of you will know. Uh, two lakh people visited the temple. Like you know, keeping the place clean itself is a pain, and people are doing that. So that's a big vertical. Similarly, the Pushkarni has to be kept clean. 30,000, 40,000 people take bath a day, every day. Now, how do I keep the damn place clean? Managing the queue of 80,000 people. 40,000 people have to be transported. What I'm trying to communicate is, he, Balaji gets something like 500 kilograms of flowers. 500 kilos of flowers are transported to Balaji's place. I mean, I mean 20,000, 30,000 people should be fed every, every meal. Now, each one is a separate vertical. And what, who is running, running the show? Two IAS officers. One fellow is a very senior fellow. The other fellow is a little junior. And they have no great expertise in cooking, flower making, gardening, afforestation, water cleaning, etc., etc. They only know a little bit of administration. The larger point is, if you have a little bit of common sense, you can do a lot of interesting things. That's the larger point. But that it, the, the, this one talks about that. That's the idea of sort of no. Uh, the book expands on that. Public accountability and transparency. It is Balaji's money. You can't afford to spend it the way in which you want. It's Balaji's money. See, in fact, one senior IAS officer who used to come to this institute with whom we had an excellent rapport. He used to say, I am not an IAS officer when I'm posted in Tripadi. I am Balaji's estate agent. This is why you say, just as like, you know, our administrative officers say, like, you know, we are only here to make sure that the community is well kept. That's our job. We don't enjoy this power, but our job is to facilitate people's comfort, whether it is student, whether it is faculty, staff, board. Director, whomsoever it is, I should make sure that they are they are well kept. That's what that's the position people take. Public accountability is very high. The moment you do something, for example, like you know, if somebody puts one crore in the hundi, it becomes a news item. If somebody got chori ho gaya, it becomes a news item. If somebody does not get food on time, it becomes a news item. So therefore, Tirupati is a small place, and where the press fellows are always around you. So public accountability and transferability in this organization is is very high. Okay, uh, now. How do I prioritize activities in an organization? Pilgrimage, amenities, housekeeping, cultural, charity, social, health, education. What kind of framework that we need to have? We talk about that. Excellence in managing large-scale operations. Anaprasadam, Q complex, laddu, transportation, luggage, accommodation, housekeeping. Parakamani is the place where people simply count money. You can see about 200 people counting Balaji's money every day, 24 by 7. It's an amazing sight to see. There's a large uh, block. And which is which is completely closed. CCTV cameras are kept all over, and fellows are sitting and just counting money. And they just don't have count money beyond a point. What they do is for coins, they only weigh and pack. For notes, what they do is they put it on the machine and then they just take it back. And then in, 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 incidentally, you find a, a UK pound. Incidentally, you find a US dollar. So usko separate karna hai. Then somebody puts a demand draft. Somebody puts a check. Okay, somebody puts the old two thousand rupee note. So all these things has to be sort of you no know, uh, resolved because people think there are a large number of people in Rajasthan and Gujarat where Balaji is a business partner. 
it is a anonymous business partner so yeah, they will get say balaji will have 1% share of this business so what are these fellows are very faithful they cheat the income tax department they don't cheat balaji so they go and bundle the cash and put it hey aapka paisa hai mujhe zyada paisa do agle saal mein so all that that happens so therefore there is a very interesting way of uh, managing this parcamani and uh, how do we manage the social harmony uh, and peace in a place like this for example the, for a place like this we will expect an army of security guards zero security guards there are actually half a dozen armed guards in the temple they are managed by strong supervision um, but sir will know for the one one superintendent of police who has spent about uh, 10 15 years in service ips officer he is security in charge he is also in charge of uh, vigilance he says i manage by observation rather than intervention i don't police manages by intimidation but balaji security manages by observation he says like you know i know where the trouble is brewing because every trouble takes certain time there is a product life cycle i keep a close watch on what is happening for example you can't smoke in tirupati you can't eat meat in tirupati you can't consume alcohol flesh trade does not exist how do you ensure with minimum uh, set of people is a, is a very very large challenge and that's managed and they have they have excelled the process of subcontracting activities no activity is done by balaji administration it's all subcontracted whether it is transportation housekeeping cleaning of the uh, tanks parakramani parakamani or shivari services whatever you talk about it's all outsourced and they have they have i have not given those numbers like the amount of the cash units they buy the amount of goods they buy sugar they buy rice they buy is are running to several thousands of tons so e auctions purchase procedures these are all very well streamlined okay and the board meets once a month and now i think here the yes, set of issues are listed here i am not going to go through this uh, very seriously but i'll just mention only one a senior administrative officer who owes his allegiance to the constitution manages a religious institution this is a very topical uh, matter i will not push this beyond a point i spent half a paragraph on the book on this in other words temple management has to be completely relooked at Uh, because if you owe your allegiance to constitution you can't owe your allegiance to balaji uh, therefore you have to figure out which way you want to go i thought i just mentioned that there are multiple stakeholders in tdd therefore the senior management decisions are under constant scrutiny now for example again on the the board consists of people nominated from various walks of life uh, and their priorities biases and political applications can be fundamentally different a yeah, diverse board is a good thing tirupati board consists of 28 people a yeah, diverse board is a good thing a diverse board also can be a pain how do you balance this is a very important uh, important challenge like you know often uh, the eo has a very difficult task of synthesizing this and putting this together uh, we have sort of you know, provided some statistics on how many board meetings how many resolutions uh, what is the average number of time spent on resolutions etc we have talked about all that that will give the complexity but i don't want to talk about it beyond a point here i think that this is good enough to sort of you know uh, get a give you some sense of what's happening um, <clears throat> i think uh, transformational changes under the trans- i will just mention this because these are in some sense you no know, talked about it in the book in a, in a detailed way uh, managing darshan is a very very important aspect of this temple in fact i am amdabad did a study uh, and there are some other people who did some studies and so normally what happens you know if a person like uh, an intellect person goes to tirupati and he sees the queue and he has a solution this queue can be managed so he writes a letter to the eo saying that uh, this queue can be managed better so because balaji is a public property so everybody has a view and they have something to say so the managing darshan is becoming a big issue uh, sometimes you know it can take about 24 hours to have balaji darshan for 10 seconds so the primary purpose for which people are coming is only to have darshan so you can't cut down the waiting time but you can make the waiting time enjoyable that's the philosophy that they have taken our faculty member from iim amdavad suggested balaji can be replicated outside the balaji temple so that people can have his darshan and go away nobody bought this idea but uh, uh, some of these things are possible okay now the point is managing darshan is becoming important very very important because uh, people come there only for that purpose over a period of time what this organization has done is it has moved away from a physical queue to a virtual queue so you go there like log in register get a hand band, band uh, what is it called wrist band and move on and they give you a time come tomorrow morning at 730 before the temple your darshan is 8 o'clock come at 730 so you can come at 730 until then you can go around kanapina gumo you whatever you want to do you do 
Okay. Now they, they have they have successfully converted this process from a physical queue to a virtual queue. To me, that is a transformational change because you are becoming pilgrimage centric. You are becoming consumer centric rather than uh, religious centric. That I think is a is an important part. Voice of customers is extensive. If you go to Thirumala Thirupati Devasana website, you get to see everything. This is the only organization. I do not know whether IIMs do that. This is the only organization where every board resolution is available on the website. Complete board resolution. Our board number ka mobile number bhi nahi milta hai. Mobile number puchhe mujhe confidential hai. Main director ko puchke deta hu. Udhar to every board resolution is placed on the website. You can see that completely. The agenda paper, approval, voting, whatever has happened, everything is there. So you don't have to go anywhere to look for information data. That I think I thought is an amazing example. Voice of customers is very seriously addressed to. You can write an nasty letter, they will get a reply. Now, we have also said that can be improved a little bit more, but that's an important, uh, in other words, for the first time, somebody is listening. You go to, like, you know, for example, Puri Jagannath Mandir and ask whether Darshan ka time hai, baad mein jao Nobody will bother because they are used to making a car every year and destroy it. Likewise, they also destroy you. They don't care. But this temple worries about it to some extent. Okay. There are a large number of charitable trusts, about 11 of them. Managing that is not a, a small job. Goshala is a very important activity which is being managed. About uh, 4,000 cows are there. And uh, the way to manage them is, uh, I mean, our own criticism is Goshala is seen as a cost center. We want that to be seen as a profit center. So therefore, uh, there are cows and there are elephants, there are horses. I mean, all kinds of things which go in the Balaji's processions are kept in that place. And the pricing of laddus has been a very uh, controversial topic. Uh, should, for example, like, you know, the laddu prices used to be, market price used to be very different from the cost price. And there used to be rationing. And the rationing used to be like, you know, if you're, a, if you're, a, if you're depending on this, the, the category of ticket that you purchased, you are eligible for two laddus or four laddus, etc. Some of them are free. Some of them are by the price. Somebody came and rationalized this overnight and said, you can get as many laddus as you want, pay 50 rupees. It changed overnight the entire ecosystem. Black market went away. Middlemen uh, become almost uh, useless. So I think some of those things are, are happening. Inducting the women transfers is a big deal. Big deal. Can you believe like, you know, in a religious institution like Tirupati, women transfers are introduced? I mean, this is a political, a political decision. They lobbied very carefully. It took them about three years to get there. Uh, but the message is very clear. Like, you know, if you want to transfer your hair, if you are a man, you go and sit before a man. If you are a woman, you have an option to sit before a woman or a man. And depending on that, your transfer is done. Now, this is, this is a very, very modern decision. It's absolutely modern decision. In a context of a classical organization, what it says is consumer centricity is more important than possibly the religious connotation, the framework that we are, we are dealing with. On the tactical decisions, I think I talked about laddu production. The transport decision is an interesting story. Uh, the department, the, 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 the temple had its own transport department. One fine morning, they went on a flash strike. The EO got very upset. He said, hell with you. You are disturbing the pilgrimage flow. Therefore, he called the Andhra Pradesh Road Transport Corporation, handed over the whole thing to them. Now, that's an interesting decision. And that decision led to a large number of uh, secondary primary operators. And there is an economics around this. Uh, I talked about it in the book. I don't want to get into that because it doesn't look very pleasant, but that's okay. 250 crores of business, people are not going to leave it alone. And therefore, a lot of, a lot of interesting things happen around that. There is a land that was available from Ramakrishna Mission. And this land was purchased by Tirupati for a price, for a consideration. This is a very, very tricky decision. You can be, you can be accused of being very biased towards Ramakrishna Mission. Uh, Swami Rangananda was the person who was in charge of that. And he made this proposal and it was very carefully handled and it went all the way to the CM of Andhra Pradesh for his approval. And once he approved, the land was purchased. So the idea was to try and communicate to you, the people who are sitting in that organization are very conscious of the fact that they are, they are under public scrutiny. They have to be transparent. They have to do things above the board. That I think is the, uh, is the larger issue. The VIP break darshan, there used to be VIP break darshan in the morning for about uh, 45 minutes. About uh, 3,000 people will go in this darshan and this is supposed to be the, the coveted darshan of Balaji and you can't get it unless you get a recommendation, etc., etc. They have dispensed with this. They have dispensed with this. This is a remarkable uh, decision because they said in front of God, everybody is same, come on the same line. Okay, still some people go on VIP. That's a different story uh, because in our country, VIP, is, uh, VIP status is uh, directly proportional to the complex inferiority complex of the individuals concerned. And therefore, uh, this happens. I think, uh, yeah. 
that's the end of the book and i think uh, we just put this very symbolically saying that dedicated to the lotus feet of lord balaji so just uh, this is venkatramaniya's creation i did not do that venkat you want to say something venkat yes sir yes sir i am enjoying uh, your uh, session sir but you want to say something or you don't want to say anything not now sir not now okay let's we we are open and we just wanted to keep it very brief the idea is not to bore you with details some of these things are talked about in detail in the book and there are of course some hidden messages in the book if you read in between the line you will see something very interesting and we just left it open ended because the leader should also think about it no and we also put a small reflection section after every chapter there are about 40 small chapters after each chapter there is a small reflection session where we thought the main theme can be can be revisited and you can sort of think about it so that's the idea of the of the whole exercise i stop here and thanks for coming in such large numbers i expected two three people to show up but i am very impressed that mera class mate na admi nahi aata hai okay like you know so therefore like i was thinking like you know only about the two three flows will come including the librarian so let's see how it goes like you know thanks for coming so i am open to now take some questions we are 10 15 minutes yeah sure if you want to clap clap yeah like you know, we are clapping for balaji why should we do it in uh, in passive mode we should do it in active mode Okay. Sir, uh, thank you for this uh, presentation. I have two questions. First question. आपका is, नाम क्या है? थोड़ा परिचय दे दो. Sir, my name is Abhishek Verma. बैठो, 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 बैठो. Verma जी, बैठे, बैठे. कहाँ से? Uh, I'm from Bhatinda, but uh, you're from Bhatinda, Punjab. Currently, uh, working as an academic associate in the area of strategy. Okay. Uh, my Shiksha Guru is uh, Dr. Lakshmi Dhar Bera, who is currently the director of IIT. Your Shiksha Guru. Uh, means uh, I'm affiliated. To you are Niskan Vlog. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. <laughs> so oh, i recently wrote a book i mean you must be knowing about who and dr bera on what uh, is five aspects of absolute truth a bhagavad gita study guide yeah ho sakta hai i have not seen it he has not given me a copy uh, <laughs> but, but he is a specialist on robotics yes but yeah. he preaches uh, but he teaches bhagavad gita every day morning for one hour globally he comes on the online and teaches bhagavad gita one hour every day and plus he is the director of iit mandi he has given me a job i accept a job only because of him Okay. Anyway, um, yeah. sir, I have two questions. First question is that uh, do the same model is replicated in the uh, other Tirupati temple in different cities of India, uh, like uh, Laddu preparation a lot. Uh, okay, that's first question. Second question. And second question is, uh, I mean, there may be some other temples uh, uh, which are affiliated to uh, Tirupati. Yes, there are Vistana. all of them in the top, and another twenty of them in the bottom. Sir. Uh, um, outside the vicinity of the tirupati okay so do they practice the same because there is a okay uh, means uh, the so, as you said this is a social uh, organized means correct managing social organization so means uh, how they manage uh, the social taboos in the um, temple okay because right. there are special <laughs> taboos which we could not uh, handle uh, in other part as you mentioned puri or any other uh, religious places so how, how they manage that thank you okay now the third question is more deeper so i will try and uh, navigate it carefully the first one is easy to answer what is the first question uh, do they prepare the similar activities in other temples of balaji temple for example there is a balaji temple ne- next to the nirma university here do they follow the same thing answer is no the the laddu here is far different from the laddu that you get in tirupati the ingredients are different the preparation is different the process is different the only thing that is common see whenever a temple is created under the balaji name tirumala tirupati devasthanam gives you some money as a donation as a seed fund etc etc they send the priest also for religious the religious duties are the same broadly the same the religious protocol is the same but the magnitude and the level of activities are completely different and therefore there is no correlation between what happens in tirupati vis-a-vis what happens elsewhere this is the answer to the first question the second question is are these models applicable followable in in other temples in this country answer is yes that is the reason of writing this book that, that is the reason for writing this book for example what is that that is holding the temples in our country to be not kept clean what is holding us what is holding us in not being publicly transferable and accountable what is holding us in collecting the appropriate money from the undi and using it appropriately for education health care whatever that goes into that goshala this that etc and also promotion of ancient literature like you know veda sanskrit this that etc padmavati medical college is one of the very well known medical colleges of tirumala tirupati devasthanam so the larger point is you get money from the society through in the name of balaji provide back to the society no 
Why is that not happening? That I think is the is a larger question that we are we are asking. The next issue is like you know the management in many of these temples, like you know which we are talking about, are not necessarily nuanced with what is their. Whereas in Tirupati, it is not that they are sophisticated, but they are on public accountability, and there is a push for them to be transparent, and that's how they they manage this. As far as the last question is concerned, if you are talking about the taboos associated with the caste system, it doesn't exist in Tirupati. So long as you are a Hindu, you can enter the temple. The broad connotation is Hindu, nothing more. Why others are not able to follow, I have no answer. But I, my 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 suggestion should be others should also be able to follow. Sir, one more thing, addition here, sir. Now any religion also can participate. Only thing is, earlier they were stating that oh, I believe in Hinduism. Even that has been relaxed now. That no, no. you can enter. Okay, sure. So therefore, it is universal in some sense. Yeah, it is universal in some sense. Okay, yeah. Sure. Any other comments? Yeah. Sure. I I visited uh, TTD three times. Okay. And I have three different experiences. experiences. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I I. Uh, uh... By day, by day, by day. Yeah. You know. I went uh, from Delhi first time. So uh, there was a lot of biometric systems were yes. there that time. You know, this face recognition, your thumb thing. When I went there, the darshan was much more easier to right. see it. Right. Second time when I went there from Bangalore, uh, it was really very difficult. It all started with a website crash. Okay. And unfortunately, I was not carrying that, uh, you know, the hotel uh, right. Right. seat. Right. And uh, it was difficult to locate. And on that day, it took, I think, almost 12 hours to get the darshan okay. from 10 to okay. night 10. Okay. Uh, and third time, it was much more easier. So uh, that's why I don't know why I do they thought of moving away from this biometric. I thought that was a little bit much more planned thing. No, I think it still exists. Even now it exists. For example, the I think this experience is varied, is very real. Uh, the entire IT system is managed by TCS free of cost. Uh, TCS does this. They have stationed 40 programmers in Tripathana to just manage the IT system. Sometimes things do go wrong in spite of having the best of the people that are possible. Uh, for example, Ambani's have undertaken the uh, the donation of uh, renovating the entire walking steps. And they they just do that. Birlas have done something else. Everybody does something which is which they think is very unique. Uh, yes, but I think uh, IT systems are very prevalent. They can go through their own life cycle. Sometimes, you no know, things went went wrong. Now, I think the broad strategy in terms of managing the darshan is that's why I think as a management, it's worthwhile is try and indirectly. Uh, prom prompt every pilgrimage uh, to seek an appointment with Balaji. So that you don't come before and after and wait and waste your time. For example, like you know, you want to go to Tirupati, you look at the calendar, you decide, like, you know, I want to go on, let's say, 2nd of February, uh, 3.30 to 4. I want you to plan that way so that it is easy for me to manage that crowd. What happens to the people? See, today, out of these 80,000 people, roughly only about, like, you know, about 20,000 people come without uh, appointments. The rest of the people come with appointments. The broad strategy is to move them all, 90%, 95% by appointment. And that's the reason why this uh, biometric system was used. Even today, we can use that, um, uh, what is called Sudarshan. Uh, you can still use it and you don't have to be in the queue. You can be offline and you can you can go through the process. If you don't want to register in the Sudarshan, then you go through this larger process. So their idea was, they, they are now, in fact, thinking of, like these are all articulated very carefully in the book. Now, they, they are now thinking of creating a buffer space in the foothills, which can accommodate something like 2 lakh people. That means it's a small city on its own, floating city on, on its own. So, there will be two and a half days of people can be accommodated. You come and stay here, do whatever you want, go to Thirumala only for two hours before the Darshan and get out. Because Thirumala is becoming a very fragile place. And you make noise pollution, wire pollution, this pollution. The place is becoming more and more uh, exposed to environmental damage. So is it possible to contain it? Their solution is shift the crowd to the, uh, the foothill, accommodate them, look after them carefully. There is also a commercial dimension to this because people will eat, people will have this, that, etc. Do whatever you want and then go and come back. So that I think is the direction. Therefore, it will happen. The actual journey from Thirumala to Balaji and come back could be about four hours, everything put together. But from your place, it may take probably, if you are going from Ahmedabad, there are a large number of Gujus who go in the morning, have a darshan, come back in the evening. Because Gujus have got their own ways of managing things. 
Uh, now you can see plenty of them. If you take the morning flight from Ahmedabad to Chennai uh, at four o'clock, you will find a lot of gujus. Balaji Darshan gaye jaare. Shamko wapas aayega. Kaisa gaya, kaisa hai. Like you know, unke hi pata hai. Like you know, there are very interesting fellows. Like you know, so I think some interesting things are happening there. Now, I mean, we must all. I'm. A, I don't want to get into that beyond a point. Um, in a large system like this, where the supervisory control is not very tight, the intended purpose and the actual purpose could be very different. Okay, and everybody has their own pound of flesh. Okay, and I don't want to expand on that because that's not the purpose of. Uh, uh, but that's uh, that's the reality that I have realized. But it's okay. Like uh, Balaji tolerates a lot of things, and he tolerates this also. So it's okay. Like, uh, yeah. Mm. Any other comments? Yeah, we're more or less five minutes close to there. Venkat, you want to say something? Yes, sir. I just want to say one thing. Well, before you say that, let me introduce you properly. Uh, no, but for Venkat, this book would not have happened. Because getting this data from them was not easy. Even though their website, this, that, etc. was happening. Because we wanted to write the book, they were not keen. So somebody wants to write a book. Of course, they sort of gave us some money uh, for writing this book for expenses and all. And that is not biased in terms of what is written here. Uh, but the larger point is, like you know, uh, it was essentially a project driven by us. And uh, Venkat speaks the local language. He knows all the people who matter in the system, and he will not leave the seat of the person unless he gives the data that he wants. <laughs> And for, but for him, this book would not have been completed. Uh, even though he appears as the second author, actually he must be the first author. Uh, but uh, like you know, uh, but Venkat's contribution to this is phenomenal. I came to know of him a little bit more when I when we started writing this book, and he came to know of all my weaknesses, all my weaknesses. Like you know, how quickly I get angry, how can be nasty, I can how can I shout at people. Everything he learned in this process, but he tolerated me. So thanks, Venkat, for that. No, no, sir, it's my. Great opportunity. Yeah, it's okay. It's all reality. Let's move on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want to say something? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, and uh, the, all the students and the staff who are sitting there, we sincerely thank uh, on behalf of uh, Professor Ravichandran, sir. And it is a great uh, experience of writing this. There are, I think, I can only say that there is a lot of transformation that has happened in me, sir. Honestly. Mm. While writing, well, when we started this, where we were, what we were, and when we end up with this, sir, when I'm carrying this book with me uh, today, hmm. it's like, you know, I, I, I'm not able to speak, actually. Okay. And that's the kind of, uh, you know, experience that I'm going through. And, uh, you know, kind of discussions that we had during uh, this Palms Conference outside India, where it started and the, how the papers have moved from different parts of the uh, country as well as outside the country. I think it's a uh, great experience and uh, very happy to see this book in this form. And only one thing that I want to uh, uh, you know, share with uh, everyone here, it is uh, the, the great organization and their belief in us, sir. Uh, the, the temple is a very sensitive matter and uh, the management has approved this and uh, uh, allowed us to write this. I think that is a uh, great opportunity for uh, me as well as uh, to you, I think. And the lessons that I have learned is from the organization point of view. And also you have mentioned that, you know, uh, working with you has really strengthened my uh, lot of issues, sir, really. And uh, research associates uh, also very patiently they worked. And uh, Ajay is uh, Ajay's contribution was enamel. And IAM Lucknow also, though the, we are operating under a very uh, rule bound system, they are very kind uh, to. The warning. <laughs> <laughs> this is the warning. I can see that. The, the fund was parked in IAM Lucknow because Venkat was dealing with the funds. So every travel request needed some 500 signatures. Uh, but anyway, you can manage all that. So I think uh, we will get something very similar shortly. So from March, from March 1st onwards, I think we are moving to that system. So it's okay. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And this uh, seven uh, is a wonder, seven wonders. I see this book with the seven things on uh, Lord Balaji. I think that is a, 
great experience sir that's all sir i have nothing else to thank say thank you venkat for joining i know you are talking from lucknow because you are teaching in lucknow he is based in delhi but he is teaching in lucknow today so thanks for joining and i think thanks for coming and uh, uh, i think we feel privileged that uh, we could do this piece of work uh, it may not be very publishable it may not be recognized but i think it's a small interesting piece in here and the, the professor kandwala wrote a review on this and he said it is an amazing book to write i think that i thought is summarizes the whole thing in one go and then i think several people deepak pari wrote saying that i have been to tirupati several times i was wondering how it is being managed but this was a well <laughs> so i think uh, the, the, we got some reviews professor kamkoti of iit chennai wrote we should have more such books okay so i think uh, that of you no know, it feels good feels nice and i think uh, my in my little life journey i have done something which is which is probably internally satisfying thank you very much for coming and we'll get to bye i would like to express my sincere thank to professor ravichandran and professor venkat ramane for delivering such an interesting book talk taking us through the uh, working of uh, ttd i hope uh, this book will be very interesting for all, all of you to read through okay thank you i'll just hand over a, a small moment to, to you sir for your book Okay, but this is this is, this is for the book talk. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. This is very special. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. One we have for Professor Venkat Raman. Also, we will send it to him. Uh, yeah. Right. Thank you. That's very nice of you, sir. That's very very nice of you. Yeah. Join us for a tea uh, outside. Yeah. With your permission, I will also have a mighty here, sir. <laughs>